Welcome back, and we are covering the top five inspirational stories that aired on CNC3 during our 7 p.m. news this year in 2016. Danica, you have been an inspiration. I mean, I have was the first person to interview, and um, you have always left me speechless as a young person who is so confident and intelligent. I mean, and you were featured on CNC3, and you were even an anchor. So now, Danica, we are going to share because you did so many stories with us, we're gonna sort of put all the things that you have done with us at CNC3 in sort of a, a compilation as to what you have done and the inspiration and uh, seeing the, the response of the public, knowing that, I mean, your level of intelligence, your confidence. So now, Trinidad and Tobago, we're gonna see Danica's story here on CNC3 as one of our inspirational stories for 2016. Danica Linton is no ordinary eight-year-old. Despite her challenge of being born with a rare condition, she is proving to doctors and the world that she can do anything she puts her mind to. Danica wanted to share her story after seeing the weekly segment Against the Odds. Her mother, Danielle Skeet, starts at the very beginning, the day her daughter entered the world. She was born with a condition called arthrogryposis, multiplex congenita. Right? They said it happens when every 30,000 births. There's nothing that could have been done to stop it, to prevent it. It just happened. Even though the condition affects her legs and arms, Danica learned how to write and is excelling at a school, the Sacred Hearts Girls Primary School. Danica's mom, Danielle, is proud of her daughter. She says giving birth to Danica eight years ago was not an easy task. On the day of the delivery, you know, they induced labor, then they had to stop it because the doctor realized, well, you know, it's not a head she feeling. She was actually frank breach, meaning she was coming bottom first. So then I had a C-section, and after they took out, they brought her to me, and then they started to tell me, you know, well, your daughter has a deformity. And I, of course, as a mother, first baby, I took it really hard. On the bed one time, I, I started to freak out, and they had to put me to sleep. Many are amazed at how Danica has adapted to the world around her in spite of her condition. She continues to prove her critics wrong. Danica went to Canada for surgery to correct her clubbed feet and it allowed her to walk. But there's another surgery available to correct her arms. We actually had to take her to Canada. They said they could probably see about her hands if she have the muscle up here, right? But um, there are not much options. Danica said she wants to become a lawyer and she's adamant that one day she will use her hands. She's also an avid viewer of CNC3 television. I love CNC3. Well, I like the weather. I like the show against the odds. And I like everything about it. Her father, Dwayne Linton, says Danica is one of a kind and he's always known she was special. She is one of a kind. She, at eight months, she was speaking, talking, calling me Dwayne, calling her mother Danielle. You know, she was fluent in Spanish because she liked the Dora program. You know, she was speaking Spanish. Danica now wants to inspire others to follow their dreams against the odds. And this is one of Danica's dreams. Back to you, Golden Kamal. Otto Carrington, CNC3 News, Port of Spain. Well, as you can see, folks, we got a special guest in studio. Danica is here, Danica Linton. I don't know if you recall earlier this week in our segment, Against the Odds, we featured Danica. She told you quite bravely and quite confidently her story. And now Danica continues to live her dreams here on the CNC3 set. Welcome, Danica. You. It's good to have you. Very good to have you. And you have a story to tell us tonight, so you can go ahead and deliver your story to the nation. The Young Training and Employment Program is telling young people to be their own bosses. Crystal Cave says YTEP's plan to teach young people skills through business programs. Yay! Well that was done, perfect. Well really, really good. Now
Now you're looking at this camera over here and we want you to just share a little. Is indeed, Danica, you have been so. I mean, what, what can I say? You have been so confident, and in a way that you have also shown the attributes of someone beyond your age to me. I, I always say you're an angel in certain in, in my own little way. So, tell me, what is the plan now? Because Trinidad and Tobago have seen you as such a gem, as someone very powerful and someone positive, especially living with a disability. I mean, to see you as someone advocating change. I mean, what is your next step for you, especially now? What What is your dream? What are your focus in life? What do you, you want to become? My focus in life is to do my best in school because when I grow up, I want to be a designer. So my goal is to head for that. So Danica, what you have seen Shivanan's story and uh, I know that you was touched by the story um, what, what do you think I mean someone doing something like that coming out of his car you know to help someone in, in distress nowadays you know people are sometimes skeptical about doing stuff like that I mean how do you feel with him knowing that there is someone like that who can come and assist you in anyone in some in a dire time of need well I feel I feel like we still have hope in our country because right. if the if the situation was reversed and the people who were take the people were in that situation I'm sure they would have liked the man who was on the floor to help him so I think Shivanand did something very good I think so too yeah. um, so so now we are going to see the story that we have in our top five inspirational stories that aired on CNC3 the story is also printed in the Trinidad Guardian so we are going to segment one where we're going to see Shivan and Balkaran and the story and the good Samaritan indeed he is for 2016. The images of a man covered in blood and another man trying to render assistance surface on social media on the weekend with many giving kudos to the man rendering assistance. The GML Enterprise team was fortunate to catch up with the Good Samaritan. He is 25-year-old Shivanan Balkaran. Balkaran says he was on his way home from Movie Town when he saw the man covered in blood. First, I didn't even think it was blood because I was thinking maybe if it was blood, somebody would have stopped. As I continued driving and I looked into the mirror and I saw the pool in the ground. That's when I stopped. And the guy said to me, come now, boy, just like that. He said, come now, boy. And that's when I realized something was wrong. Nobody else stopped. Nobody didn't stop. The, everybody was just slowing down and looking, driving about. I didn't even know the guy took this picture of me when I was assisting the man. I posted a comment also, right? My comment was, um, you know, I'm sick of this because everybody I saw just watched the man. It had some people actually saw what went on. They just drive about their business, right? The wounded man has been identified as Kareem Sintros of Diego Martin. It is believed he was stabbed and thrown out of a car on Rison Road. He died about four minutes before the ambulance arrived. Shivanan said he is deeply saddened. The Good Samaritan, who fills all the requisites to be a true guardian of TNT, wanted to give TNT words of advice. I didn't know the person. He was a complete stranger. And I didn't make it a problem to try to assist him. Otto Carrington, GML Enterprise Desk, CNC3 News, Shogonas. What an amazing story on CNC3 for 2016. Shivanan Balkaran coming out of his vehicle to help someone in assistance. Although it was tragic, he was indeed an inspiration to Trinidad and Tobago. So Danica, tell me, you have seen the story of Shivanan and we have Shivanan here with us. Um, tell me, how would you describe what you have seen and the... And the his him going beyond the call to help someone here in Trinidad. Wow, just wow. 
such a good Samaritan. It's tragic that a light life was lost. Mm -hmm. Shiv didn't think of race or gender. He saw a human in need, so he stopped and rendered assistance. So Shiv, it's been how many months since um, this incident happened? I know that you attended the funeral and the family was in contact with you. How, I mean, how has things been since that incident? And I mean, how has things been for you, I mean, seeing such a tragic incident in Trinidad, incident in Trinidad and Tobago? Well, I think it's been about six months already. And um, I would say, well, uh, yes, I've been in contact with the family, um, even attended the funeral and stuff. Um, it was very heartwarming. The, the welcome that I received there. Yes, I, I deeply feel the loss of the family, knowing that I first handedly witnessed the loss of a life. But um, I wish there was more I could have done. So I think we need to come out and be the helping hand in order to receive a helping hand. Okay. And that is one of our top inspirators here for 2016. One of the stories aired on CNC3 and also published in the Trinidad Guardian. Um, so now we are going to segment two, where we will be talking to Joe Bryan, a DJ, someone who was born with a disability and working towards a scholarship in Brazil. We're going to find out more as to what he has done since we have aired his story on CNC3. Welcome back. So we are here in San Fernando, on the San Fernando Hill, uh, looking at the pristine beauty of the south land of Trinidad and Tobago. So Danica, how, how would you describe the view from up here? Well, Otto, it's a lovely view, very windy, and when it's raining, it's very, very cold, but it's a really nice view. Danica, what from you have met Joseph a little bit, a little bit of Joseph, you have met Joseph a little bit. How would you describe Joseph as an individual? He's, he's a very nice man. He's, I hope he, I hope he do, does good in his scholarship and he's very good. Okay. So now we are going to see the story that we have done this year on CNC3, one of our top five inspirational stories here on CNC3. I don't want to hear the depressing news. You have 10 years to live. You have five. I was supposed to be dead about. I'm worried next time. You said it right, God is the boss. As Joseph O'Brien says, there's only one boss. This 21 year old was born with a rare condition, but he's never let this hamper his progress. He has one arm, but Joseph is a house DJ at a popular Avenue night spot, Coco Lounge. Joseph takes the situation in stride and even sees a funny side of things. I have got a lot of it, right? Arthritis in my two legs. But the major one with my legs is called um, proximal femoral focal deficiency. Basically, this, but usually, the, you know, the normal case is that it's happening in one leg. But I have a very rare case where it happened in both my legs. So this is it. That. Um, the lack of a hand, I really, I really know what's going on. I just really go by one day, plan for my future, live now, that kind of thing. Joseph has eight passes and has completed his A-levels at Fatima College. He has his eyes set one day at being an interpreter. But languages is his passion and Joseph says his job as a DJ will help him fund his studies in Brazil. Joseph showed us his skill and talent and how he makes the afterward crowd at Coco Lounge move. <laughs> Joseph has already started to save for his studies in Brazil. He says it will cost close to 400 US dollars a day for five years. Although he is differently able, he is not letting that hamper his aspirations. He wants the world to look out for him. I don't discriminate against anybody, race, sexual orientation, nothing like that. Because I want to understand where it is you're coming from. Because what we're doing in this world right now is all of us are living in fear. I want to be that per a per one of the people who are open to educating people to stop this hate thing. Otto Carrington, against the odds, CNC3 News, Port of Spain. 
Welcome back. We have Joseph O'Brien on set with us. Joe, so tell me, 2016, we have done the story. What has happened now with you, especially pursuing your career in languages in Brazil? Well, I recently heard from the embassy. I was contacted via email and by, by a phone call a few minutes later saying that I was um, accepted to do um, French literature, a bachelor's degree in French literature in um, uni the UFRR. I would love to tell you what that meant, the Federal University of something I cannot pronounce. <laughs> So, Danica, you have seen Joseph's story. I mean, how, what would you just, how would you describe the story that you have seen from your point of view? I like his self-confidence, his positive mindset and attitude. I like, I like his approach to life. I admire him. He doesn't want pity. He can manage on his own and he doesn't discriminate. He is truly unique. So. Joe O'Brien, and your DJ name is? Joe O'Brien. Joe O'Brien, one of our inspirational persons here on CN Street for 2016. So we have just heard from Joseph O'Brien, one of our inspirational stories here on CN Street for 2016. Joe, we wish you all the best next year, April, year, and April. Um, represent Trinidad and Tobago and the red, white, and black. All right? Thanks, man. Yeah, man. So now we are going to segment number three, where we're going to talk to Shamla Maharaj and share her inspirational story for 2060. So Danica, you have been such a good co-host for the last three segments and I appreciate you coming and making time out of your busy schedule for the Christmas holidays to come and spend some time with us here at CNC3 to share the top five inspirational stories for 2016. So Danica, I appreciate you coming and sharing your time with us. Thanks so much, Danica. Thank you very much. Okay. As we return, we have Michael Ramsing. Michael Ramsing has been the man instrumental, I would say the engine room of all the inspirational stories we have done here on CNC3 for 2016. I mean, Michael has been someone I've been working with for the last two years, an excellent cameraman, editor, you name it, a, tr a true inspiration. Um, unfortunately, we weren't able to have everyone on set with us for this story, you know, and uh, we have Shamla Maraj, who Michael, we have we met, uh, uh, she has cerebral palsy and also has a master's or BA and you know she's in actually a I mean not to cut you off auto but she inspired me to go back to school I mean just hearing her story I decided I mean I had English to graduate for a long while now and just even interacting with her and saying if Shamla could do it I can do it too correct because you Shamla know? has also inspired me as well to go towards my postgraduate diploma and stuff as well so at this moment you know we are going to share Shamla's story because Shamla has been doing a lot she has written a book Mike and um, she has also she has doing she's doing a lot to me, especially in the agricultural sector, mm -hmm. and she hails from Barakpur. So. From these sultry images, Shamla Maharaj looks like any normal person. However, there's a slight difference. She gets around on a motorized wheelchair and has a smile to die for. I have several palsy. I was born with several palsy back in 1985 as a result of negligence. Um, um, I, it is categorized in two, spastic and antoid. So as you would observe, I have no control over my feet, my hand, one of my hand. I have involuntary body movement. It affects my speech. This 30-year-old from Barak Pro is a beauty with brains. She has a bachelor's degree and also possess a master's. And this year, she's heading for her PhD. Education started at the Princess Elizabeth Special School at the age of one and a half. And then I went on to Barak Pro Secondary Comprehensive School. Um, where I did modern studies and A-levels. 
going into my PhD. It is like one step after the, after the next. I always like progress and I want to progress. I know it would be a challenge because figures will come my way. I would have to do a next bigger, more comprehensive thesis. And that was a challenge. But that is what you aim for, for progress. I have to make sacrifices. She has also represented Trinidad and Tobago at a UNESCO convention in Paris. With agribusiness and economics her major, Shamla believes that she has a plan to help the economy in this time of recession. Shamla loves and sees no limits in anything she does. Life, as I said, life is not over. Once you have the mindset, you can achieve anything. Do not be dependent, but be independent, just like anyone else. Shamla is focused on inspiring the world through education and making it against the odds. We know whatever she sets her sights on, she will achieve. Auto Carrington against the odds, CNC3 News, Barapo. An amazing story. What do you think about that story, Mike? Um, looking back at the story, you know, I, I was just uh, remembering the little challenges that we had with Shamla was actually trying to control his space, yes. her mobility, but also to Shamla, I mean, to me, Shamla, just being in her presence was, yes. was something that motivated me that I need to tell the story the, the right way. She gave, she gave me inspiration, and as the inspiration, I, I hope that I portrayed on air. We had challenges, but we got the final story on air because people see the final product, but they don't know sometimes what goes into the, the, the difficulties in, in audio, the difficulties in, you know, even Shamla's space. We did that, sh you know, me peep Trinidad and Tobago, we did that interview where? In her gallery. Sometimes with news conditions, and sometimes, you know, the main motivation is actually telling a good story. And just like the, the label of the show, Against the Odds, I mean, Against the Odds, we bring these stories to you. And we really appreciate the fact that the audience gave us such good feedback and that we could use it as a tool to inspire Trinidad and Tobago. Because that's what we're about, basically. We're about the positivity. We're about inspiring Trinidad and Tobago. And, and that's what these stories are. And that's what they're designed for. Well, now we look at inspiration but inspiration and what you say positivity towards animals um you know sometimes we see strays at the side of you sometimes we, we we are not too caring of them but this husband and wife ranu and vijay ram smear have i mean have gone beyond the call every day going along the m2 ring road and areas in uh, south trinidad to feed the strays across south trinidad that by itself is one of the inspirational stories and michael you can remember that story and the the challenges with light and it was late evening because they yes, fed the dogs at five <laughs> it was it was a challenging story i mean like for me i mean you ought to you know that i'm not i'm not a dog person and i'm not into animals you know I, I have no shame in saying that but i mean actually seeing what these people do out of their, their the goodness of their own hearts Correct. i mean nobody paying these people to do this they, they're doing it out of their own i mean they actually kind of convert me a little bit make me look at it things a little bit differently i mean and I'll, and I'll leave it to the audience. Let, let they judge Correct. based on this story. Vijay Ram Sumer is from Laramain and is well known by many as he plies his maxi for hire. But this simple man has a deep love for animals. For more than five years now, Vijay, now accompanied by his wife Ranu, traversed the train line in his maxi delivering food for the many abandoned and stray dogs along the M2 ring road. Vijay and Ranu also give some of the dogs medical attention and assist in getting some of the animals adopted. He admits it's a challenge, but he serves to ensure that the animals get variety. Anything I can get my hand on, bread, big, roti, any, any stuff, rice, anything I can get my hand on, I started off giving them what I could afford at that time. I ended up buying the, the dog chow in the big 50 pound bags. And I'll buy that and I'll feed them with that now. Vijay and Ranu took the Against the Odds team on their daily mission. The first stop to leave some water for the dogs in this harsh, dry season. When it rains, he creates innovative ways for the dogs to shelter. So, why does he do this? But let's just say we are in the wilderness. No food, no water, and we are in the wilderness. We just imagine this for just a, a, a brief moment. Think about what you, how, you, how you will feel for that time. 
Are these animal faces in this thing right through? They have helped over 30 dogs, a new lease on life for the happy dogs. But not everyone loved these stray animals. Sometimes they are attacked by people and some lose their lives after being struck by vehicles. Vijay and Ranu are hoping that the government will do more to help these animals. Ranu is attached to some of the dogs who come to her and allow her to touch them. Her role is the nurse. And most of them wild, so we just, however, we grab them. Sometimes while they're eating, we just go and throw it easy on top of them. <laughs> so that's about it. But we clearly kept them like those who get to know us personally, that we hold them, sometimes we read them. Sometimes I buy the baby Panadol. I don't know what to do. So when they're in pain, fever, I buy the little baby Panadol. I'll give them a little bit of his help. The Ram Sumeros intend to continue to help the stray dogs as long as they can. They say their love and passion to help dogs will never die. This is their way of giving them an opportunity to live another day against the odds. Otto Carrington, Against the Odds, CNC3 News, Laramine. So, Mike, what is the most memorable thing of that evening when we were down south with the Ramsey Mary farm? For me, I remember telling you, Otto, Otto the light, the light, <laughs> Otto, we have 15 minutes, let's, be, let's make it happen. Why we, 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 I mean, it was getting dark and I was telling Otto, um, you think you want to finish today? I mean, this, this it, it really excited to get dark and I know Otto was pushing. One of the most memorable things memorable thing was when they met the dogs and the dogs heard the maxi because Vijay plies his maxi mm. and uh, he, the dogs just hearing the maxi and they running out from whatever crevice they were in just to meet to knowing that okay this person cares about me and this person is bringing food for me I'm so hungry and and even they taking these animals and carrying them to the vet and mm. spaying them so that they wouldn't reproduce. What I remember from Ranu is um, these are stray dogs and she petting the dogs, she kissing the dogs I was like, this woman really have to care about these dogs. That's what I remember from the story. I mean, these are stray dogs that probably didn't bathe in months, but she really had a different level of affection. And it shows that sometimes, you know, connections can, can transcend human to human interaction and could go beyond human and even to animals. And I mean, if we could get more caring people like that out there, I mean, I think we could kind of make sure that we go back to where it was. For 2016, you have seen some of the top inspirational stories here. On CNC3, uh, we must thank all who came to support us and all those other stories that didn't make it. Your stories are still important to us. Your stories are still inspirational. But for now, this is what we offer to you. And uh, Michael and me into 2017, you can see us inspiring TNT. You can see us doing so many different things across your Antibia because there's no limits in positivity. So that's all from us, folks. Have a happy 2017 from us here at CNC3 and from me and from Mike. <laughs>